So the title of the project is Positive and uh, it will be uh, first, actually the first, first show of Positive will be on the 20th, 26th February in Gallery Ligat. And um, so first I will talk a little bit about the, how I started. Uh, I started Positive in 2013, in October 2013 and, um, and um, so I, when I was working on Mother Michael Goes to Heaven, this is a project of three prostitutes living together in uh, Budapest, uh, in a flat, um, I have very often uh, bumped into the question of HIV and, uh, and, and AIDS and that was the time when I became interested in this issue and I really wa I, and I wanted to start this uh, after, uh, after I finished Mother Michael Goes to Heaven. But um, this is a very close community and, um, and the HIV infected people within these close communities even even they, are, they are even closer, so that was very difficult to reach them. And um, so I could, not, I could not gain access to these people, and, um, and, and, and then I, I dropped this question. And then I was, uh, I was approached by ACB Gallery, and uh, they were looking for artists, so they were working with artists um, on, a, on an art project, so we had to, we had to, we had to work with one patient. Uh, well, one patient with one disease, and uh, and uh, so there was a sculptor, there were sculptures, and, and I was the photographer. So obviously, I had to make a photo, one photo of one patient with Crohn's disease, and um, and I I, um, I found out that the um, the um, so the pharmaceutical company that was um, uh, sponsoring this um, ACB project, they also dealt with HIV. Medicine, my HIV pills, and um, and this is how I could I could um, I could I could get a phone number of the association of uh, of Plus Association. So there was an association of HIV positive people um, in Hungary, and um, and, the, and the man, so the head of this asso association, he did not he, he he did not want to give his face to this project, but he gave a phone number of a lady. A retired teacher, uh, mother, grandmother. Her name is Marta, and uh, she she is a woman who is openly speaking about her problem, about her state, um, and uh, this is how we met. I met Marta in um, in October 2013, and, uh, and Marta's diary starts with um, with a sentence I can still remember this day, but I can never forget that day. This is the day actually when she got to know that her husband has AIDS, at that time he already had AIDS, and, uh, and that she was infected with HIV. And, um, and I can also still remember that day because it obviously made a very high impression on me. And um, um, so uh, at that time I was already looking at art projects and I was, uh, I was mostly impressed by art projects that were um, that were without the body, so that were disembodied, so they, that that showed this kind of disease uh, or this this um, state uh, not showing the body or the deterioration of the body. And um, I was really much um, in, influenced. So I really much liked uh, Felix Gonzalez projects, uh, Felix Gonzalez uh, Torres projects that he made. It's it's an abstract diary of him and his boyfriend who was infected by HIV and then he died of AIDS and also Felix Gonzalez Torres, he also died of AIDS. And uh, you cannot see the body there, you cannot see anything from the disease, you can also see, you can only see what he um, experiences um, during this time. Uh, experiences of their life together, experiences of his life or how he works as an artist with this um, state. I also liked uh, Pepe Espalius projects and of course Nangoldings and um, a general idea was also a, um, a group that made a high impression on me. So what we did with Marta is that, um, so just uh, some words about her, her, um, her story. She's a um, how she introduces herself. My name is Marta, I am a mother, I am a grandmother, I am a retired teacher and I am HIV positive. So, and, and she always says that, and this is the order of priority in my life, which means that uh, the state, the HIV state, is not the most important thing in her life. Uh, she, she, learns, she learns to live with this state, but, she, um, but this is not the most important thing 
in her life, which means, I think, as I understand her story, which means that she doesn't consider herself as a victim of HIV, but she considers this as a kind of opportunity in her life that gives her other, other, I don't know how to say that, maybe other directions or other ways to, to, to get to know herself or to get to know life. So what we did together is, um, is uh, yeah, sorry about the, about the story. So she was infected by her husband. She lived, um, we can say in quotation marks, she lived a typical, typical life, an everyday life. She's, she, she, she's, um, she, was a, she used to be a teacher, now she's retired. She has children, she raised her children and uh, she lived with her husband. And, um, and 15 years ago, she got to know that her husband had AIDS. Um, after one year of trying to find out what he had, because he had high fever and he had all the symptoms of AIDS, but at that time she didn't know what it is. Um, and then they got to know that, and, um, and soon after she also realized that she's also infected by her husband. And of course it gave another layer to her life, or it gave another direction, and, um, and a totally new life to her. So she had to live with the, with the state that she, she will belong to, or this is what she thought at the time, that she would belong to a group which is marginalized by the society because nobody knew anything about HIV and still very few people know anything about HIV because it's almost totally absent from the Hungarian media and also from the Hungarian art scene. And, um, and uh, at that time, when she got to know that, she, she started to write a diary. Actually, it's only four pages. Um, the, this is the first, first, four, the first four pages, and this is when she stopped. Uh, the first four, four pages of her diary is about, is about getting to know that she has HIV, how she copes with it, how she survives this knowledge. And, um, and, then, and then when she thinks about how to tell it to her children, and um, and then, and then also she was worried that her children would may, may, may be infected as well, but of course they are not, fortunately. And uh, this is her diary, but of course she has her own interpretation of this story. So what we did together is we were talking again and again about the same stories, so we were going through the same stories all the time. And, um, and I was following her with my camera. So we were discussing things, sometimes I got a text, from her, from her diary, or, or I was writing down, or I made videos with her, and then and I was trying to imagine those th those scenes that are also, so they are all in the past, of course, um, that that might have happened to her at that time when she got to know about this state, and then how she survived, what she did. For example, she has a beautiful story about about the first day when she went to the Danube and uh, she touched the walls and she was looking um, into the water and she was thinking and then she realized that she has to go back to, the, to her husband to the hospital and then she, she got to know that she has to stay with her husband until her husband passes away um, so and, and um, she has lots of she, she, she has a very kind she, she has a very abstract imagination and she, she also verbalizes uh, these things in a very abstract, picturesque way, and uh, this is what I was trying to show in the in the project. So the project is um, is very text based. So there are lots of texts, which are mostly Martha's um, texts, and also my interpretation. Not, not interpretation, but what I was writing down all the time. And uh, and there are photos. Uh, the photos are objects of, the, of her late husband. She did not keep too many things of her husband, but, but the, there are some photos of her, of the objects of him. And, uh, and there will be a video, which is, which is the most important part of the project. And the video is about, um, is, is, so it's is, is cut or edited from, 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 from the many, many, many interviews that I made with her. Um, yes, and, um, and, and about the cooperation with Yula, some words about our co cooperation. We met in uh, 2013 December, and, uh, and this is my first uh, work, which is so cooperative. When I worked together closely with the, with the curator from the, almost from the real beginning of the, of the project, and um, 
because um, so I've never I've never done this before. So I would I would not I would not say that what Luna was doing is a typical curatorial work. I don't know too much about typical curatorial work, but he was not just selecting photos or he was not just I don't know write, writing uh, text, but he was also pretty much involved in the art project as well. So how to put this together as a piece of art and. Um, I think he's the one who knows the best this story um, besides me. So, um, yes. Mm. Well, basically in 2013, October, the first thing we did is at first when I met Lila, she showed me an incredible amount of photos uh, depicting the, the, like what was happening in the mind of Marta 15 years ago when she got infected uh, and these stories were um, already so abstract so the photos taken by Lila uh, are following this abstraction so we immediately realized that it cannot be like a um, traditional or, or a normal photo exhibition uh, the result which will come out uh, so this is why we decided to rely more on the texts of Marta and uh, as Lila did it before in uh, Mother Michael Goes to Heaven um, it could have been a diary uh, in the form of a book but this time we decided to make a photo film let's say photo film um, which is uh, based on the story of Marta uh, she's speaking and um, um, parallelly with the, uh, the verbal part, uh, there are uh, there will be um, photos shown of this uh, series. Uh, why is it important uh, to be abstract um, if we deal with some uh, issues about body, which is uh, which gives the audience already the opportunity? It's uh, HIV gives the opportunity to use our stereotypes. Um, I think it is very important to, to keep the distance of these stereotypes um, and it is one way uh, to not show the body. As Lila mentioned, uh, the artists during the AIDS epidemic in the United States uh, or in Western Europe but mostly in the United States uh, also didn't uh, uh, present the body as something uh, infected, as a victim. And uh, apart from the fact that uh, the story of Marta uh, already doesn't give the opportunity to the, to the audience uh, or to, to someone who is listening to this story to use the stereotypes because uh, it's, it's uh, far from uh, those circles were suspected to be a uh, uh, possible victim of uh, uh, HIV, such as uh, gay people, prostitutes. Uh, but uh, it, it, is, uh, it is intentional that we, we don't use uh, that many portraits, uh, body parts and so on. And uh, our collaboration was simply based on this uh, and then I, I was really happy to take part in, in uh, this uh, process, which uh, hopefully continues. Um, because uh, it's needless to state that in Hungary the HIV discourse is uh, not that present, nor in the media, uh, um, nor in, um, like in the wider society. Uh, it is the problem, uh, according to the, the rest of the society, of a small group of people, uh, which is uh, fortunately true that uh, HIV was never uh, as present as a disease or a virus as uh, in the 90s in the United States, uh, but still it needs some more presence. And uh, as a result of uh, this Lack, lack of discourse uh, around the HIV, uh, Hungarian contemporary art already hasn't started thinking about this. So I could say, or as far as I know, uh, Lila is uh, one of the first artists who are dealing with this uh, issue. So thank you for involving me.
Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for working with me. It was my pleasure. Mm -hmm.